to problems uh, from the dynamics book. Uh, we're going to be doing chapter 14 problems from the fundamentals of chapter 14. And we've moved on to, you know, the principle of work and energy for a particle or a system of particles, okay? So right now we're going to put the equations of motions in the back burner, okay? Um, and then we're going to just focus on, you know, kinetic energies, potential energies, and so on, solving a problem that way. So I'm going to, you know, the, usually the first part I take more time into it just because I kind of explain a lot of the, the concepts we're going to be dealing with. And there are various ways to organize your problem um, when you're doing these problems, and, um, and we'll go through some of those. So the principle of work and energy, the book gives it to us like this, T1 plus the summation of all your potential uh, energies, and so conservative and non-conservative energies, and then uh, equals T2. Uh, if you're a physicist, if you're studying physics, you might see it as, um, you know, like Ke or something like that for kinetic energy, okay? Um, but what, what it means is just what's your kinetic energy in the beginning? Well, it's T1, it's mv1 squared. What's your kinetic energy at the end? Your end state, mv2 squared. Okay, and now this is, you know, most students will, won't, won't have any problems with this part. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Well, everyone kind of gets tripped up is solving all of these, right? The book tells us that our potential energy um, from state 1 to state 2 of, uh, let's say, you know, a, f a gravitational force, or you know, work done by gravity, right? It's going to be minus w delta y. So if you are going, um, if you're going downwards, right, you'll end up with a positive uh, energy here. And if you're going upwards, um, you're going to end up with a negative value. So then they also tell us, okay, for springs. Right, from state one to two, we have minus one half k s two squared plus. I'm oh, sorry, minus one half k s one squared. Okay, so if we don't have a problem with springs, this whole term is ignored. We don't need it. If we don't have a problem with energy, uh, sorry, with grab, uh, you know, uh, an object going uh, up in the y direction or down in the y direction, we won't need to have this. And then, you know, we have uh, some, you know, uh, f work done by a force, and that'll be F times, let's say, your displacement times cosine theta. And this cosine theta is where a lot of people get confused. This theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. Okay? So I guess if you write it like this, right? It's the angle between the displacement vector and your force vector. Okay? Which can also be written in, in scalar form, as the book does, like this. Alright? Which means if. This, you know, if we look at this problem 14.1, there's a 500 newton force. There's a component in the y direction, which is this one. And there's a component of that force that's in the x direction, which is the one that's, uh, that we care about, 4 fifths. Okay. Now, the displacement is this. Okay, this is S. So if we look at the displacement between, you know, this, the vector, be, sorry, the angle between the 500 times 3 fifths, the y component, right, the angle that that makes with the displacement vector, it's going to be a 90 degrees, right? Cosine 90 is 0. So this force here does no work on our object, okay? All we care about is the ones that are 
parallel to the displacement vector, okay? Which in this case, we're going to have the x component here, right? Is parallel to our s vector, our displacement, okay? And that's that's what we're, that's what we want to focus on. That's what you have to make sure that um, you know you 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 have these concepts down. All right, taking a step back, taking one step back. Let's just kind of begin working on this problem. So, like I mentioned, we're gonna have five hundred, and this will be times four fifths, right? We have the y component, 500 times 3 fifths. And now we have a spring, okay? And we're going to be compressing that spring, okay? Which means the force of the spring is actually in this direction, okay? So, um, I guess, and I guess we, we won't need to, we won't matter, I guess. Just know that there's a force there, but in terms of the cosine theta and all that, don't worry about that because we were given our work done by the spring as, as this formula. Okay, so what we can do is you can in, you can write down what these terms are individually, and then just plug them into um, equation one up here, and then solve for your um, solve for what what, what you uh, or what you need. Okay. What I'm going to do is say, okay, T1 is 1 half mv1 squared, okay, plus what other, what other forms of energy are here? Well, I have the force of, um, or what other work are invo involved in this uh, uh, particle? Or the, the work that's being done by this 500 newton force in the x direction. So I'm going to have 500, 4 times 5th times the distance that it that it acts on, right? And it tells us that the block is subjected to a force of 500 newtons determines velocity when s equals 0.5. So it's going to at s equals 0.5. That's the that's the instant where I want to find the velocity. So this force acts. The 500 newton force acts on the system for 0.5 meters. Okay, so our work is the force times the distance times the angle between those two, and the angle between the 0.5, this s, and the 500 newton force in the x direction is zero. So cosine zero is just one. So I'm left with this force times distance. Okay. Now, what other forms of what other forms of energy are here. We have our spring, our U12 spring. So I'm just going to plug in everything I know here. So plus, minus 1 half K, where's K? Okay, 500. S2 is 0.5, right? So they're telling us the final position. 0.5 squared minus one half what that's one is just zero the starting position okay and then there's no more there's no gravity no work done by gravity um, that's that's pretty much it it's just the force times this distance of less s equals 0.5 and the spring energy and that's all equal to t2 which is the kinetic energy at the end v2 squared okay um, we know that let's just cancel out some terms we know that this term is zero okay the block blah, 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 the block is at rest and the spring is uncompressed okay when any when s equals zero so then we know that this term is zero okay that term zero, and that's how a bunch of all these terms will begin to drop out. So there's many ways to do this. Do this. I, I always like to just do one equation with all the all the energy terms 
the kinetic energy terms and then equals the final kinetic energy of the system. Um, so let's see, this will be uh, 400, right? 400 times 0.5 minus uh, 250 times 0.25 equals one half the mass of this block is 10 kilograms v2 squared all right let's you know do them do the math here we get 400 times 0.5 minus 250 times 0.25 we end up with 137 0.5 actually let's move everything to the right hand side square it all isolate v2 and then we end up getting uh, about 5.24 meters per second okay so that's the principle of the the work energy principle. So all the work that's being done on the object, so it's kinetic energy initial plus all the work that's being done on that object equals to the final kinetic energy. Okay. So your energy is conserved, and then this is what you end up getting. All right. And um, what you might do separately is just at the beginning of your problem, you you write down, you know, um, the work done by gravity, work done by spring, work done by any other uh, conservative forces, okay? And then from there, you begin to say, okay, the work done by gravity is zero. Uh, this will end up being just minus one half, 500, Point five squared, okay. And then you 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 know let's say I think this was like uh, da, da, da. let's see that's two fifty times point two five sixty two point five. And then once you do this, once you do it this way, um, I think this was two hundred. Once you do it like this, all you got to do is just plug and chug into this equation. You're just going to say, okay, T1 plus, oops, this was negative, plus 200 minus 62.5 equals T2. Okay, that way, that's, an, that's another way to tackle the problem. If you don't want, if you're not comfortable with just doing it all in one equation, you can just write them all down initially and begin to cancel out the ones that you don't need and identify the ones that you do need and then you know uh, solve for those okay so there's a couple of ways to do it choose the one that fits you um, some some like again some students will get confused with all the energies and the works that, that are acting on the on the system so just pick the one that works for you thanks guys appreciate it i uh, hope this kind of begins to uh, help you guys out and i'll see you guys in the next video don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you need to. Um, thanks for your attention.